So Black Friday Masterclass. Now Black Friday is a huge event and it doesn't uh, doesn't actually happen till November, but you're probably getting a lot of emails right now uh, around getting ready for Black Friday. And I'll take you through today why, why that's really, really important. But in the e-commerce world and in the retail world, Black Friday is the biggest event of the year. Okay, so Q4, you'll hear the word Q4 be thrown around a lot. You'll hear BFCM, you'll hear second half. These are all the sort of terms we use. But I know when I've worked in Black Friday events, and this is probably my 10th year doing a Black Friday event, brands that do it well can almost make the half of their revenue in one in one month, if not one week, okay? So we had one brand I worked with, a global brand that was based in Australia here, and we would make 50% of our yearly revenue in this month alone, okay? So the opportunity for your brand is huge. This is the time when people have the wallets open, we'll go through it. This is the time where, you know, you have the opportunity to sell. This is the time where people are buying. We're coming out of a bit of a economic uncertainty. You know, people need a little bit of dopamine gratification. This is gonna be the time where they're gonna reward themselves and reward others, okay? It's the time people have been waiting for. So Black Friday is uh, an event that we need to think about and an event that we need to be a part of in some capacity. We'll talk a few a few different ways that we can do that. All right, so we've done the, the housekeeping. Those that have just joined, please cameras on, use the chat, take notes. I wanna just show you a few things, right? This is what we did. These are some uh, members from us last year. Now, just I put, just put four screenshots up. We, we had about 200 people go through a Black Friday course last year, but I just wanna give, give you a few insights here. So top left. That is one of our brands. They sell kid, a kid's toy product. They did $806,000 in November alone by using Black Friday. But what you can see is the spike that they seen near the end of the month. But we've seen some pretty good growth in the middle of the month and then some near the other month, uh, near the end of the month. Now, the one next to it in the top right, they did $425,000 across November and December. But again, you can see those spikes. Okay, that's when the Black Friday event happened. Now, one of our other members down the bottom left they only did $68,000. Now, I'm only saying only $68,000, but if you have a look, they had one day that was over $20,000 that they did just in that event alone. They average about 10, 15K a month, but they did $68,000. And then the other one is uh, $96,000 for the month, and that is, again, a big spike. So you can see that you may be having your normal baselines, but if you get this right, if you get this set up perfectly, and if you follow what we're gonna teach today, we can really start to see some pretty good results. And these results aren't abnormal. We see it all the time if you put the plan in properly, okay? Uh, who wants to get results like that in their business? Write it in the chat, please. I'd love to hear. Uh, and then maybe just so I know who I'm chit-chatting to. If you've done Black Friday before, uh, just type in BF. If you haven't, just type in no in the chat, just so I know how many people have done it before, please. No, no, BF, no. Okay, we've got a good mix. No, no, no. Okay, cool. This is exciting. Most, we've got a lot of no's. So this is, a, this is good fun. This is, if this is the first time running an e-commerce business, this is like, it's like the Super Bowl. This is the, this is the time where you've been working all year and this is like the game day. And I like to think you're like, this is, this is the time where we just get our, we just get our shit together. I hope you don't mind. I might swear a little bit today. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit rowdy. All right, team, let's get moving. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I am Brendan Gillen. I'm the guy with the black hat and the black tee. Uh, I've been in e-commerce for about 15 years now. I've been ranked top 50 in e-commerce for uh, three years in a row. Uh, I am the CEO of two brands. Uh, we just launched one last week, which is super exciting. I've worked for some pretty big global brands such as Super Dry Clothing, uh, a large pet, pet retailer here in Australia, and a, a really big athletics, uh, athletics brand. Uh, I speak across stages all over Australia and, uh, and know a little bit about e-commerce. So hopefully you feel like you're in good hands today. Let's get started on what we're gonna be talking about. And today is gonna to be all about the biggest sales month of the year. Now, Black Friday was born out of the fact that there was Thanksgiving in the US. And it was the time where everyone, you know, were on holiday and they're hanging out with their, their partners or their family and their friends. And there was, the retail space really declined during November and everyone was waiting till December to shop. So this event came out, was like, great, we're gonna clear all this stock and we're gonna prepare ourselves for December because prior to Black Friday, everyone used to spend all their money in December for Christmas. They'd go to the shops, they would buy all their things and then it meant that no one would spend any money in, in November. So they, 
the someone thought about this Black Friday idea and, and launched this event. And this event became a thing. And then it started to spread across the world and it was and it now realized it was one of the biggest sales days of the year. So what tends to happen is now the sales have shifted from December now into November. Okay. And we're starting we're we're definitely seeing more and more sales in that. And given that, it is become the biggest sales month of the year. The second thing is that this is the time where wallets are open. It's really important to think about this. This is the time when people are prepared to spend. And it means that they're not just spending on themselves, they're spending on other people. And I'm sure a lot of you are the same, that you're almost waiting till the sales now to spend your money so that you can buy gifts for Christmas, you can buy things that you've been waiting on, you've been saving your money up. The wallets are now open. Now, the challenge here is the wallets are open, but it means that you're not just competing against your competitors, you're competing against everybody, right? And we call it the share of wallet. So as a retailer, how much of the share of the wallet do you have in this event here, okay? So let's just say someone has $500 to spend over the month of November. How much of that $500 will they allocate to your brand? And that's how we wanna put this plan in place and um, put our hand up. The next thing to realize about Black Friday is there is increased competition. Everybody wants that wallet. Everybody wants to get the money from the wallet. So that means that there's huge, huge competition. We need to be on our game. We need to have the right plan and we can't just send one email out and hope for the best. We've got to do the work. And today's session is going to tell you exactly the pre-game work that you need to do so that when you hit the Super Bowl, you have the best chance of winning. The other thing that's really uh, important to note, and this is something that happens in our elite team, is I hear the comment that says, you know what, I don't think I'm going to do Black Friday because I don't want to devalue my brand. If I'm always on sale, people are going to think I'm a sales brand. Yeah. Does anyone ever think that? Does anyone ever think I'm not going on discount because then everyone's just going to wait to my discount? Black Friday gives you permission to do that. Why? Because everybody's on Black Friday, which means you're not devaluing your brand. It's an event that you can take advantage of and use it as an opportunity to discount without hurting your brand. It does not devalue your brand, okay? But what it does do is it builds long-term customers. This is an opportunity to bring new customers in. And I didn't believe this at first. I used to think, oh gosh, if you get someone in on a discount, they're always gonna stay in on a discount and they're never gonna to wanna to pay full price for you. But if I look at one of our brands, uh, which is our combat sports brand, when you look at the cohort analysis, when you look in Shopify, there's that, there's that interesting graph that's a cohort analysis over 12 months. We've found that every custom that we've bought in November, or we've used in, or that's captured and purchased from us in November, has the highest customer lifetime value overall across our business. So we're noticing that anyone that we've acquired in November has spent more and more with us than any other consumer. Okay, so really important to notice that. It does build long-term customers. So what's happening and when, right? There's a, there's a few things here. It's not just about a one-day event. There's a couple of things that are happening. Oh, that's not the right one. It's gone all funky now. Sorry, guys. I'll write, I'll write it down. I've, my, my presentation has changed slightly. I'll show you what's, what's happening and when. So we've got a couple of things that are happening. We've got right now, we're in September, okay? This is where we're talking right now. This is what we call the, pre, the pre-season, okay? So this is where we start doing our planning. We start just getting everything ready. That's why you're on this call because you wanna work out what is it that we need to do. Then as we move into September, uh, into October, we call this the warm up. Okay. And what this is, this is not just warming up you and getting yourself ready and getting all your ducks lined up. It's also warming up your customers. And this is the biggest part to, to failing or succeeding on Black Friday is getting your customers warmed up. Okay. So it's warm, warm up time. And then in November, that's game time, okay? Excuse my writing, I've had a lot of coffee. That's game time. But that's not all, okay? Everyone just thinks, okay, now we're over. But we now move into December, and then that's gifting time, okay? So this is sort of the layout that we need you to think about. And I want you to think in this, because to get the best results, you gotta play like the best in the business, okay? Every big brand right now has, has already got their Black Friday plans in place. They're already ready to go. So we wanna make sure that you guys are set up as well. 
So what we're gonna work on today is we're gonna go through what's your preseason look like? How do we warm up our audience? And what does the game plan look like? Okay, is everyone down for that? Just drop it in the chat, yes or no. If you're not down for it, you can disconnect. If you are, I'd love to hear. Yes, let's do it, let's do it, come on. All right, cool. So that's what we're gonna work on. So Gab has put the workbook in the chat for you guys, okay? So if you guys can download that workbook. Now, you can just follow along on the workbook or you can write notes or you can do anything, but we're gonna be doing a little bit of work and I'm gonna be drawing on my screen, so, so make sure you, you jump in on that one there. All right, so the three things that we're gonna go through is, we're gonna go through this, this, uh, this, this, this layout, but the first thing we're gonna walk, walk through is how to build an audience. Now, if we think about growing, an audience, the reason an audience is important is we want to have people to sell to. And we want to make sure that we give ourselves a primed list of buyers, right? If you think about Apple or uh, any anything, uh, any, any event where you've seen a product launch, right? They haven't just turned the product on and said, hey, buy our thing. They've primed the customers beforehand so that when they put their hand up, people are going to come in and buy it. We're going to get you to do that as well. So we're gonna give you a prime list of buyers. The second thing we need to do today is the reason we want to have more customers is we wanna pay less on ads. So if you think about November, November we've got every single retail brand in the world is gonna be paying for ads to try and get their, their, their deal in front of customers. Imagine how expensive that's gonna be, right? And I'll use the Super Bowl as an analogy. You've got this short period of time to put ads and we know how expensive Super Bowl ads are. Why is that? Because there's a supply and demand mentality. The same applies when it comes to digital ads. We have a supply and demand, which means we want to make sure we've got an audience that we can talk to without having to rely on ads. So we're going to pay less on ads. And the final thing is we want to get in before our competition. So if we have an opportunity to talk directly to our customers before our competition does, we have a much better chance of selling to them. And the outcome of this is we're going to be creating a list of future customers. So building our audience is the key to really winning at this. So today we're going to go through a tool which I've created, which is called the audience builder. And it's the tool I want to work through with you guys. So grab your notepads, grab your pens, grab your workbooks, and let's get down to business. So on the worksheet team, um, you're going to see something here, which is called, which is, this is like my audience bucket. The reason building an audience now is important is you've got a couple of things that are happening here. This is your bucket of customers. Right now, your bucket is made up of existing customers. Okay, so that's your current bucket of, of people who you've got. Now, this could be either in Shopify customers, or it could be in Klaviyo, it could be in Mailchimp, wherever it is that you're doing your ads. But you've got a, you've got a current list of existing customers that we can show the offer to and sell to. We've then got also, we've got people who haven't bought from us. So we'll call that your warm list. Okay, so it's your warm list of customers. So that's currently what your scenario looks like. We've got these nice customers here that's bought from us that we that we really that we like and love. You know, it's a lot easier to sell to an existing customer than get a new one. So these are there. Then we've got our warm list, which is our list where we're currently should be sending emails or SMSs or messages to. But what tends to happen is Black Friday comes along, and we try and sell to these guys, and we try and sell to these guys, but we've already done that, so we actually don't have a huge percentage of people to sell to, okay? Because our warm list already knows about us, and our existing customers knows about us, so we've only got, say, this, this amount of people to, go, to sell to, okay? And that means that we're just gonna empty that bucket really quickly. We don't wanna empty our bucket. We wanna fill the bucket up. So what this October period's all about is how do we get new people in our bucket, okay? Because then when it comes time to sale, we wanna make sure these new people become warm people and then those warm people become customers. Is this all making sense to everybody? Yeah? It's all making sense, thumbs up to those, yep. Yeah. Cool, yeah. So we've gotta fill our bucket up. If we just keep pulling out of the same bucket and the bucket's not filling up, we're gonna empty that one out, okay? Really, really important. And it's important to start filling your bucket up now because we can't, we don't want to be doing it in November because November's too late. It's the old Chinese proverb, you know, when's the best time to plant an oak tree? Today, yeah? Okay. So I want to take you through three methods that we can use to grow our list. And this is our audience builder. So if you go to that page on the workbook, there's three ways we can use to attract a new audience. And there's three types of audiences. 
The first one is our email audience. And, and to be honest, email audience is the most valuable. And this is the one, if there's one that you wanna focus on, this is the one I want you to focus on the most is building your email list. Emails are gonna be the core to this whole strategy. So having a strong, big email list is, uh, is really important. So the way this audience builder works is we're gonna come up with how, how we're gonna get people in our list. Now, getting an email address is not as easy as it used to be. We used to just put a sign up and say, hey, sign up to our newsletter and fill it in and, they, and they'd sign up to it. But people know how valuable an email address is now. So they're not just gonna give it to you for free. They're gonna want something in return. It's a value exchange. So if we think about that, what we wanna do is we wanna say, well, what are we willing to give the customer in return? What are we willing to give them to get that data back from them? So there's a couple of ideas that we have. And look, these are by no means the, the main ideas, but these are the ones that I know work, okay? So the one that you'll see all the time is we give them a discount, okay? That's pretty straightforward. We see that on our website and we see, okay, we give them $5 off, 5% 5, uh, 5 off, et cetera, et cetera. The second option is we might enter them into a competition of some capacity. You know, give us your email address, give us your details, and you could win a thing. You could win a prize. You could win a gift card. You could win a product. You could win something like that. Okay, so this is a nice value exchange. They're going to give you their email address if they're going to give you get something in return. Other ones you might be aware of, which you'll see at, uh, occasionally across, depending on the brand, is maybe some sort of PDF download or access to something. Right? Maybe something like that. So PDF downloads, we often call them like lead magnets or you know um, customer magnets. Could be something like a white paper, uh, instruction manual. It could be a, uh, I've got a checklist. It could be anything like that. A blueprint, okay? It could be something like that. Uh, recipes if you've got like a food product. It could be styling guides if you've got a fashion product. It could be an instruction manual if you need to build something. What do you need to give someone to get something, okay? And then as we start to get more sophisticated, you know, VIP programs could also be something, right? Join the list to get early access to this thing. Join the list to get 10% off all the orders. And I'm sure you've all seen this at retailers right now. Now, before I go into how to use these ones, in the chat, who's already doing this and which one are you doing? Are you doing the discount? Just write in the chat whether it's discount, whether it's competition, whether it's download, or whether it's VIP. I'd love to hear what you're already doing. Discount and comp, discount, discount, download, discount. Sounds like, I sound like a rapper now. I could be like Eminem or something. Um, competition prize. Yes, Gab, quizzes are also very awesome. Uh, quizzes are a great one. Yep, a tiered discount. You tried discount, didn't work. Competition VIP program. Cool. Uh, great, all right. So let's go through just how, how to work through these offers, okay? Because this is the most important part of it all. We want to grow our email list as best as possible. So when we think about running an, a discount, there's not a one size fits all approach. And I get this question all the time, which is better, dollars or percentages on a discount. The way I like to think about it is if we're doing a discount, just come up with a value, okay? So let's assume, uh, and the best way to come up with a value is I like to liken it to an average of say 10% of your average order value, okay? Thereabouts on average. So let's just say your average order value is $100. Then we would either give, we would give something like a $10 discount, okay? To sign up, 10% off. Or we would give 10% off if you prefer that. So come up with a value and you could either do a dollar value or a percent value. Now the reason I say I'm not gonna give you which it is because every brand is completely different, right? I see on some brands dollar values work, some brands percentage values work. What you've got to do is just test it. And the best way to test it is there's a metric on Klaviyo if you're using Klaviyo that's called form submit rate, okay? So you just put your offer up there, measure your form submit rate, and if it, whichever one gives you the highest form submit rate is the winner, okay? So e-commerce and marketing is just about testing. There's, there, we give you guides, but at the end of the day, it's specific to your business. So Sunil so who commented uh, that said, discounts didn't work for you, then try something else, right? If it didn't work, try something else. Try a PDF download, try a competition, try a quiz. Something will work, I promise you. Something will work. You just have to make it a clear value exchange. So other things to consider when doing a discount is you can absolutely do a minimum spend, right? So you might be giving them 10% off or $10 off, but they have to spend $100 to get it, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. This capture form is not about getting the sale. This capture form is about getting the email address. Have a think about that, okay? It's not about getting the sale. It's about getting the email address. We, get this, we, we do other work to get the sale later. Uh, and then we can also do a duration. 
Okay, uh, I know in our stores we do like a 30 day duration, 30 days, expires in 30 days. Okay, so that's how I want you to think about your discount code. All right, so let's just say you decide to go into competition. Competition, I really like competitions because you can put something that's of a high perceived value, but a low cost to you. And it also means you get more, you can ask for more information. So imagine you're giving away something that's worth $100, which is maybe your average order value of your product. People are more likely to give you more things because you're giving them more in return, okay? So they're gonna give you your, their first name, last name, email, phone number. They're gonna give you maybe they even their address because if they're gonna win a prize, they wanna give you as much information as possible. So competitions are great for that. Uh, again, just a value exchange. So for a competition, I often expect the prize to have a higher value, okay? Which would be usually average order value. There's a bit of a theme here, work towards the average order value. And then we can do these regularly, like we can do draw frequency. We do ours monthly, okay? Every month we'll run a draw, run a, run a, run a, um, run a draw in our competition, okay? You could do it a bit of an urgent one, you know, for the month of October, you know, go in the draw to win a $500 pack of whatever it is that you sell, and then it becomes time bound and you'll get more and more signups that way, okay? Now PDF download, if you're doing that, I want you to have a think about that. What is it you could do, okay? Could it be a checklist? Could it be a quiz? You know, could it be uh, recipes? What is it that someone might wanna download from you, okay? Again, it has to have some sort of value for them to give you that email address, okay? And then a VIP program, this is really important. We wanna think about when we're doing a VIP program, what offers are they gonna get? There's no point just saying, join my VIP program to get access to my email addresses. We wanna actually give them something and make it valuable. If you think about the, the retailers you're probably signed up to, uh, you've signed up to them because they give you something, okay? They're gonna give you some discounts, or they're gonna give you access to different things. So just here's some ideas here. Have a think about what the exclusive offers are going to be for someone to actually go ahead and join the VIP program, okay? Everyone finding that useful? Okay, awesome. So if there's one thing I said for you to do and you've only got time to do one thing, that is the one I want you to do. Now, if you're feeling like you wanna spread your wings a little bit, get a little bit more audience, there's other places where your audience exists outside of email and SMS. Uh, by the way, email and SMS will be the one thing that makes you the most money during Black Friday. I guarantee you that, okay? So the second audience that you guys have, or we can build on, is your social audience, okay? So when we think about an audience, the way I like to think about it is, it's the people that you can talk to directly one-on-one -on -one and you don't need to have to rent, a pl rent, rent the space, okay? So you can instantly send a DM to someone who's on your, who's following you. You can instantly send an email to someone who's in your email list, okay? That's your audience that you're in control of. So this is what we're building. It's the audience that we can talk to and we can nurture. So think about your social media. What I want you to do is if you wanna grow your social media, it's actually quite simple. All you need to do is post content every single day. It's really that easy. Post content every single day, you know, put some hashtags in there, put the keywords of what you're trying to target, but just keep posting. And this is both statics and reels, okay? Now the way the algorithm works is you're not restricted by your followers following you, okay? So by putting content out there, it actually goes out to multiple people now. It doesn't just go out to your followers, which means the more you put out, the more chance it has of getting caught up in the algorithm and new people finding you. So if you wanna build your social media following at a very basic level, this is not a social media growth session, I just want you to post every single day up until the event, okay? Every single day. Just put a post up every single day. If you can, do a story or two or three or four. Just post every single day. Okay, comment, like, share, just be active every single day on your social media for the next 30 days and your audience will grow, okay? It's, it's, I'm not gonna give you much more than that. So we gotta do, just get the work done. This is doing the reps. This is the warm up. This is the part where we're going to the gym. We're lifting the weights. The weights that you're lifting is content, okay? Now the final strategy is one that we implored in some of the large retailers that I worked in, but we can definitely apply it to your business. Now have a think in your sort of network right now of, of the things that you sell. You've got an audience of people that buy from you. Okay, let, let me think about this. Let, let, me, let me give you an example. So one of our brands, we sell boxing equipment, okay? So we sell gloves and shorts and all this sort of stuff. 
Now our audience is people who are interested in boxing, okay? Pretty pretty simple. So I wanna think about who is, a part, who is another company that has the same audience as me but doesn't sell the same things I sell? That's our partner. So in that instance, I might go to things like boxing gyms. I might go to things like personal trainers. I might uh, go to places like entertainment venues, things like that, or sports, sports clubs. They have the same audience as me, but they don't sell my product. So this is what we wanna do, is we wanna come up with an offer that we can give to that partner that they can offer to their members. Okay, so if I think about this, we could have, you know, maybe we could just say, um, fr- uh, we'll do like maybe a free gift with every purchase, okay? Free gift with every purchase. Okay, that might be the offer. But this offer is only available to that partner's audience, okay? So let's just say the gym was called BG's Gym. We would have, okay, hey BG's Gym, I've got an offer that I'd love you to send out to your members. It's exclusive to them, right? If they buy anything from us in the month of October, we're gonna give them a free thing, okay? Or we're gonna give them $10 off or 10% off. Because what happens there is it's a win-win for both of you. It looks makes them look good because they're giving their members an offer, okay? And it makes you look good because you're discounting them and you're helping that brand out. And so now what you've done is you've picked up their audience and you've put their audience into your audience. Okay, it's a little bit more work, but it's absolutely a game changer because they're, let's just say they've got 5,000 customers on their list and you've got 5,000 customers on your list. You've just instantly reached 5,000 customers who are actively your audience. Now you only need to find two or three of these people to help you out, okay? Really, really, really powerful uh, strategy, okay? So what I want you to do on this worksheet is have a think about who are the partners that you could work with that have the same audience as you but don't sell the same thing as you. And you simply just need to reach out to them and say, hey, I've got an offer for you. Okay, this is my offer. I've got an offer for you and I want you to send it to your audience. There's no, no strings attached, nothing like that. I just want to do it out of the goodness of my heart. Please send this to your, friend, your, your customers, okay? And they'll do it. We do it with gyms all the time. It works great, okay? Is this helpful for everyone? Yeah? So go through and just make sure you choose at least three partners, okay? And you know what? What's the worst they can do? They can say no, sorry, not interested. But what's the other thing they could do? What's the opposite of no they could say? Oh yeah, tell me more, okay? But if you don't ask them, you don't know, okay? And if you don't ask them, the answer is always no. So team, that is the audience builder that I want you to think about. Okay. This is what we'll be doing in October. This is your October plan. Let me know in the chat, what is the most useful thing that you've found here about this audience builder? What's, what's something useful that you've found and that you can implement? Love to hear. Partnerships, 100%. Partnerships, partnerships. It's a little secret weapon, just letting you know that. Partnerships. And you know the cool, other cool thing about partnerships, I'm letting you, leaving you all the gold here is you also then give them early access to your Black Friday deals, okay? So you say, hey partner, we had such a great time in October. Uh, You got your audience love what I was giving you. I'd love to give you early access to our Black Friday deals. We're going public in on Black Friday, but we're gonna give your members early access to it. How does that sound, right? Boom, instantly win. It's a great winner. Awesome team. All right, cool. Let's move on. This is uh, is a lot of fun and I know you guys are learning some, uh, some awesome stuff. So let's move on to the second phase that we're going into. Now, the second phase is about getting your offer right, okay? It's all well and good to do all this fun stuff and build an audience and and do all those sorts of things, but we need to build the offer out correctly. We need to know what is it, why are we going to market? Now, you remember what I said at the start of the session, I talked about Black Friday being a way for retail outlets to either clear stock in preparation for Christmas or to bring revenue in in earlier, right? They had a clear objective of why they ran Black Friday. It wasn't just because, hey, we, let's just run a sale for the sake of it. No large retailer runs a sale for the sake of it. Just let you know that. They don't just do it because they want to. They do it because they have an objective that they need to meet either internally in their business or that they haven't hit certain goals, okay? So I want you to get your offer right. We're gonna work through a bit of an offer framework here with you guys. So the reason getting an offer right is we wanna be discounting smartly. You know, margins are important and margins are the lifeblood of a business and profit is the lifeblood of a business. We don't just wanna discount for the sake of discounting. 
we want to discount smartly. And if we are going to discount or value add or whatever the offer is going to be, we want to do it smart that it doesn't, that it's a win-win for everyone. It's a win for your customer, but it's also a win for the bottom line in your business. It's really, really important that you think smartly when you do a discount. The second thing is we don't want to play copycat. Just because your competitor is doing that offer doesn't necessarily mean you should do that offer. I'll give you an example. We had a, a brand I worked on and we went up to 50% off on these products, okay? Now, the reason we went up to 50% off, which was a huge discount, we've never done a discount like that before, was 12 months earlier, we actually manufactured that product in such a way that it brought the cost down and our margins up. We pre-planned that discount so far in advance that we had enough margin to discount it at 50%. Okay, we weren't just discounting every single product. We designed a product specifically for that day and we discounted it for that, which meant we could do 50% off. But then when our competitors looked at us, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe they're doing 50% off. They must be losing money. No, we weren't because we completely planned and orchestrated that. Now, if we had a play, if we had been on the other foot and played copycat and said, oh my gosh, they're doing 50%, I'm gonna have to do it. That would have destroyed our business because we, our margins didn't let it work. So you can't play copycat because people are discounting for multiple different reasons. Some people might just be wanting to clear through stock and make their money back and not make any money. Some people might be discounting just to win new customers. Some people might be discounting because uh, they haven't hit their sales targets and they need to pay their staff. You don't know why people are discounting, so you can't copycat, okay? And you don't know why they chose the number they chose or the offer that they chose. Really, really important to realize that. The next reason is we want to pull the right levers in our business. We want to make sure that we're, we're discounting and the right lever is being pulled and we get the right outcome. So I want to go through now discount strategies. So let's head over to back to our workbook. And actually, I missed something on there. Sorry about that, team. Just a quick one. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot about this slide. Uh, this is some of the capture ideas. Sorry, I should have given you the ideas. If you need some ideas on how to capture leads, Here's, here's uh, one that we do for our business, which is competitions. So that's a great example of an ad that we run for competitions. So that would be a great way to capture email leads. This is an example of what to do on some social media. Okay, if you wanna get some of your social media proof. And then this is something around on site. So there are three different ways that you can capture your leads. I'm sure you're already sort of all aware of those sort of things. Let's get into the discount uh, offer. So when we think about e-commerce, there's three main levers that we have in our business. We have traffic, okay, as a lever, we can drive more traffic to our site. We have our AOV, so average order value. We can try and get more money out of our customers and we'll have conversion rate. And this is the, the equation that I always use, okay? Because if we get these right, let's just say we've got our, our traffic, we've got our AOV and we've got our CVR. If we get that right, then it's gonna give us our revenue, okay? So the amount of traffic we get times the amount that someone's spending with us times the amount of people that actually buy from us gets us our revenue, okay? So our goal, we have one goal as e-commerce entrepreneurs. Our one goal is to make these go up. That's our only goal in business, in this business because if these go up, this is gonna go up. We can't, we can't make revenue go up by itself. These are the levers that we need to pull to make our revenue go up. Okay, so I want you to always think in traffic, average order value, conversion rate. They're the only three things you should ever think about. So if we then think about that, we then need to say, well, what are the activities that we can do to increase each of these? Okay, what activities that we can do are gonna make these go up? Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a rapid fire cue in the chat right now, okay? What are some ideas to increase your traffic right now? Give me some ideas and I'm gonna write them down, rapid fire, throw them in the chat. How are we gonna get our traffic to go up? Okay, ads, bingo, good one. What else? Competition, nice. What else? Social proof, social proof, probably not a traffic one. SEO, definitely. Content, 100%, okay? So these are all things that when someone sees it, they're likely to click your, uh, click your link or whatever it is that you've done to get to your site. Collabs, love that gap, good one. Cool, so that's ways we can get traffic. There's lots of other ways, uh, but you know we've already nailed five different ways that you can increase the traffic on your store. Now what about average order value? How do we increase the amount that someone spends with us? What are some ideas that we can do? Bundles, absolutely. Give with purchase, love that, yep. Spend more, get something. 
free shipping over a certain amount. Yeah, we we'll call it a shipping motivator. We'll, I'll just call it a motivator. Okay, motivators. Upsells, love that. Excellent. So there, there you go. Four, th four things that we can do to increase average order value. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, yeah, shipping protection is a great one, Shinta. Shipping protection. Okay, awesome. Then we think about conversion rate. What are ways that we can increase our conversion rate? So you I said it before, social proof. Yeah, reviews, 100%. What else can we do? How else can we can increase our conversion rate? Influences. Influences are probably more a traffic one, actually. So there you go. Influences. Landing page redesign. Big one, we're all forgetting. Remove risk. What that means is guarantees. I can't even spell guaranteed today. I'm going to write GT. Yep. Warranties. Returns. Absolutely. Fast shipping. Look at that. We got more conversion rate than anything else. All right, team. So if we think about this, we've got now six, five, there's 11 plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's 18 different ideas there, right? That are going to help you increase your business. Tell me of those 18, how many of them are you think you're doing? Give me a, just a rough guess out of 18, zero to 18, put a number in there. Seven, five, 10. Nice one, Sonia. Well, obviously Sonia is because Sonia's in our elite team. <laughs> she should be doing all these things. I would have been, in fact, I think you should be doing more than 10. Anyway, six, six, eight, eight. Great. So you see what we've done there? Interest in, in immediately, you've now just recognized the opportunity you have in your business. This isn't even a Black Friday lesson. This is like just a life e-commerce lesson, okay? 18 different ideas that we sketched out in a minute. And you're only doing less than 10, everybody. All right? So just uh, just take a look at yourselves. You could sort that out pretty quickly. If you're, if you're wondering why, you're, uh, why your sales aren't going up, there you go. There's 10 reasons why they're not going up. All right, cool. Uh, is everyone finding this useful? What's useful about that little session we had around uh, levers? Love to hear what you've learned just about the levers, please. What have we learned about levers? Good ideas of things to implement. Yeah. Do more, do more, do more. They work hand in hand with each other, yes. If there's one thing I want you to take away is you can't just lean on one of these alone. You have to lean on them all, okay? You have to think about the activity that you're doing and the outcome of that activity. If you're doing ads, it's to increase traffic. If you're doing gift with purchase, it's to increase AOV. If you're doing reviews, it's to increase your conversion rate. The activity that you do always has an outcome, okay? Awesome. Now that leads me in nicely into promotional ideas. Here's a whole heap of ideas for you. And if you had have skipped ahead, you would have been able to answer these questions really easy. I said you had 18, you've now got, I don't even know how many is on here, but a lot. So. When we think about running a promotion, right? If I think about how we talked about the levers for outcomes, the same applies for a promotion. If we're running a promotion, there needs to be a reason to do it, right? There needs to be a reason for this promotion to be in market. Is it to clear stock? Is it to acquire new customers? Is it to increase our conversion rate? Is it to increase our average order value? Uh, I remember I was at a, so one of the brands I worked in with Superdry. Every week we'd have a marketing meeting and we'd talk about you know, the position of our stock, we'd talk about our sales numbers, we'd talk about our, you know, the uh, UPTs, how many so units we're selling per transaction. Um, and we used to use that data to determine what it was that we needed to do in market and what campaign we needed to run. So as a great example, we were overstocked in t-shirts, right? We had lots and lots of t-shirts. And so our inventory planner was like, we've got to clear these t-shirts, what are we gonna do about it? So we had an immediate need to clear the t-shirts so we then said, so then we formulated an offer to clear the t-shirts. So rather than just say 20% off all t-shirts, we needed to clear these things. So we felt a good offer would be 
do it multi buyers, right? You buy two for this price, you buy three for this price, buy four for that price, okay? So that was how we cleared t-shirts. We did the offer based on the outcome we had. Another week we came in and we noticed that our average order value was declining, okay? So what do we do? We said, okay, well, how do we increase our average order value? What sort of campaign can we do that's gonna help us increase our average order value? We did a spend and save, okay? We said spend over $150, you get $10 off. Spend over $200, you get $20 off. And that instantly started to increase our value. We then uh, had a month where we were like, January is really slow for us. It's really slow. We just can't get conversions. We just can't get sales through. What is it that we could do? How do we increase our conversion rate? Well, we said, well, what happens in January? Who are our target audience? This audience was young. They usually go to uni or college. So I said, why don't we give something away that can help them get back to school? So we did a free, so we turned January into free bags with every purchase. Okay, free gift with purchase. That increased our conversion rate and it got the right customer in the door. So you can see what we did there. We looked at what our problem was in our business, what our outcome we wanted, and then we formulated an offer around that. Okay, and that's how I want you to think about Black Friday. I don't want you to just think, oh, geez, what discount should I do? That is not the outcome. The thing is, what am I trying to achieve and what discount is gonna, or what offer is gonna help me achieve that? Okay, is this all making sense to you guys? This is how retailers think about it. And if you wanna be a serious retailer, it's how you gotta think about it, okay? So on here, there's heaps of ideas for you, right? These are This is basically your list of ideas. If you wanna increase your average order value, here you go. Here is some ideas, okay? If you wanna increase your conversion rate for, with an offer, here are some ideas, okay? If you don't wanna do a discount, now this is the kicker, because I think in the back of your mind, it's actually, I'm gonna get you to write in the chat, who in the background is going, I don't want a discount during Black Friday, but I wanna be part of it. Let me know, who's that? If there's no one, that's okay, I can skip this bit. Who doesn't want a discount during Black Friday but wants to be part of it? You don't? No? We don't? Now there is brands out there that don't discount during Black Friday. But like I said, this is the time where people have their wallets open, so how do we get their attention? Okay? Here's some ideas for you guys. We can get attention during this period, okay? We could do limited edition products that you can only buy during this period, doesn't need to be discounted. We could offer customization, maybe monogramming. Uh, I've seen this not on sale sale. That's always a good one, right? We're not on sale sale. We're, we're bucking the trend. You know, you could do members only products. You could sell digital products. You could do new drops during that period only, okay? Uh, holiday packages, partner programs, improve your extended return windows, warranties, gift guides, charity donations. I've got one brand in our elite team and they're not doing a discount on Black Friday but for every sale that they make during Black Friday, they're gonna double their, don their charity donation, okay? That's what they're gonna do. So there's, I've actually got more ideas in the no discount promotion than I have in all the other ones. So you can absolutely run during here. The goal is to cut through the noise. The goal is, this is when people have their wallets open. We wanna be able to raise our hands and say, hey, you can also buy from us during this period. This is the reasons why you should buy from us. Doesn't have to be discount. Discount will work really well if you can do it, uh, but if you can't do discount and you still wanna try and get sales, you've got some other options, okay? All right, so I wanna take you through the offer builder and this is something you guys can do in your own time. But basically there's three steps to this. The first one is determine your objective, which we just talked about. What is the outcome going to be of your sale, okay? What do we wanna do? Do we wanna get a better conversion rate? Do we wanna get average order value? Do we wanna increase our traffic or do we just wanna grow our database? Which one of these do you wanna do? Now, I highly, highly recommend that we don't try and do all of them. Do one or two. One should be a primary, one should be secondary. One might be, okay, we're gonna increase our conversion rate, but the idea is that we also increase our database at the same time, okay? Or, because it, it's very unlikely, and I've seen this happen, you it's very unlikely to be able to do conversion rate and average order value because they sort of counteract each other, yep. So have a think about what are the two things that you want to do here. You don't have to do two, you can just do one. That's absolutely fine. I would just not recommend you try and do everything. Because what happens if you try and do everything? You can't actually formulate an offer that does them all. And uh, I'll give you one other example. I've got a few that I can play in my back here. But last Black Friday, I had one guy and uh, he was like, his offer was so complicated that I didn't even, I couldn't get it. And he's like, well, I want to increase my average order value. I want to grow my database, but I also want to have a conversion rate. So he had something like, Buy this range and you get 30% off, but if you spend over $100, we'll, we'll give you a free gift card and put you in the draw to win a competition 
And then it was some other one about like, you know, if you buy a second time in the same month, you'll get given a free gift. And it was like, man, I don't even understand that. So if you can't articulate your offer in one sentence, then it's too complicated. People shouldn't have to think too hard about it. That's why big dirty discounts work so well because they know, wow, well, 30%, I buy it, I get it cheap. So we want to make our offer super simple and not try and overcomplicate it. So that's sort of the first thing. The second thing is measure, measure, measure. Okay. We want to measure the success. So where are you now? What's your number now? So if we're doing conversion rate, right? Let's say our average conversion rate is 2%. Okay. Right now. What do we want? What do we think is going to happen if we do this? Is it going to be 4%? You've got to measure because we don't know whether this campaign worked or not. We want to make sure it's successful. And if we're measuring it based on the metric we're trying to improve, then we know whether it's going to work or not. Measure, measure, measure. So we want to put where you are now and what you hope your goal to be. Okay. And then if we think about there's some probably some underlying business goals that you might have. Uh, you know, a big one in this period is often clearing stock. Uh, or you might want to launch a new product. You might want to get new customers, leverage it. Or there might be something else. Okay. Have a think about what the goal for your actual business is uh, when we're doing these campaigns. And I also love setting targets. How much cashola are you going to make? Now, if we don't know where we want to go, then we don't know how we're going to get there. Set a goal. Set a goal. Okay. All right, let's move through this a little bit more. So we now know what the, uh, the, the, uh, the objective is going to be. So now what we want to do is we want to plan our offer. So here we want to determine what is the promotion going to be. So if we think about what I just showed you before, you've got all the ideas here. So if I want to in increase conversion rate, uh, let's just say I'm going to do a collection discount. And let's just say one of my business goals is to uh, sell jackets. Then what I would probably do here is my offer would be 20% off jackets. Okay. So we've just linked this to this to this with this. Okay. Making sense? Just connecting all the dots. And then we determine how we're going to make the offer happen. Are we going to use a discount? Are we going to use a markdown, coupon code? Which one are we going to do? Okay. How are we going to actually make this offer work? So many different ways. There's no right or wrong way. Sometimes coupon codes are good. Sometimes just discounting the price. Sometimes automatic discounts in checkout might work. Think about how you're going to do it. Okay. Just think about how you're going to do that one. And are there any conditions? Example. Are there any minimum spend? You know, no returns on sale items. You know, not in conjunction with any other offer. This is how we build a promo out there, guys. This is exactly how we do it. Cool. And then if we go to the end, how are we going to promote this offer? And we'll go a little bit more detail into promoting the offer right near the, the final part of this. I'm going a bit, uh, a little bit behind schedule. But when's it going to start? When's it going to end? And how are we promoting it? Okay. Now, you might have guessed this offer framework works not just in Black Friday, it works in all the other times as well. So this is this actually has been built to it. And then we've got the go to market plan. And that's what we're going to go through right now. Okay, team, what are we thinking about the offer? What have we learned there? What's one thing that you've learned on building an offer? Just want to hear from you guys, make sure you're taking in what I'm putting down. What are we taking in right now when we're building an offer? You don't have to discount, absolutely. Measure, measure, goals, goals, absolutely. Tied to business goals, 100%. Yeah, plan now, 100%. I agree with that being in capitals too, Elise, definitely. <laughs> awesome, focus on the one thing. Yeah, love this. All right, guys, let's keep the party moving. So here's a couple of examples of some major brands that do this. Uh, so you might know some of these brands, some of them are more Australian-centric, since that's where I live, but you know, here's a deal, 80% off everything plus thousands of products at one pound, okay? So they've clearly got up to 80%, so it means they have a mix of stock they need to clear and they want to try and get people in the door, okay? Um, here's an example one, mix and match the entire store, buy three, get three. They clearly want to move stock, increase the average order value. Uh, Glossier, our sale of the year, 25% of everything starts now and you can also get 35% off, right? So they've got other options. Here's Gymshark, up to 70% off. Notice the asterisks. There's probably gonna be something there that is you know, not in there. They all have business goals, and look how simple these creatives are. 
There's nothing overly wild about it. They've just used an existing image and they've just put the, the offer on there. So you don't need to overthink it. Uh, now we also have at the bottom here, here we have a thousand, a hundred plus marketing campaign examples. So you should be able to click that link uh, in there and that will give you heaps of ideas. All right, let's move on to putting it into action. We've got a couple of minutes, so we're gonna make this uh, make this work. I'm not even gonna worry about the presentation to set it up. But I want you to think about this. It's not a, it's, it's a, it's not a one day event that we're doing. It's not just Black Friday. This is how the, the month lays out, okay? We're now in November. So if you think about the, the, the way we're moving, we've just done October, we're now in November. We've got uh, four or so weeks in November, okay? Four weeks. So these are our weeks in November. We also have seven days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, so here is my amazing little calendar. Now typically, and we're gonna notice this this year definitely, Black Friday is on the 29th, so it sits in here. Okay, this is your Black Friday day. Okay, that's where Black Friday is. Now what we actually tend to see, we've seen this in, in years gone past, is most people start Black Friday you know, the Monday of the week, maybe even the Sunday of the week. And then we also have uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then we also actually have, we have Cyber Monday. I'll do it under here actually. We also have Cyber Monday and so on and so on, okay? So we tend to find that, you know, this is where the main sale is across those orange days. The green days is usually where people go early, but what we're actually finding is that more and more brands are now starting to go earlier altogether, okay? So that's what we're starting to see. Who, who's seen that in market? People just raising their, their hands, yeah? Absolutely. So we're probably gonna start seeing Black November, to be honest, that's what I'm feeling. It's my gut feel. So what we gotta think about is as a brand, when do, where do we wanna go? Now, 100%, even though brands go early, this will still be the biggest day. There is no doubt about it. That'll always be the biggest day because everybody, even though they'll shop early, they're still gonna wait till that day just to make sure they haven't missed out on the best deal. So that'll always still be the biggest day, but sometimes people are trying to make sales early and make their month uh, go really well. So what you've got to think about is, how long do you wanna make your offer, okay? How long do you wanna make your offer, all right? So in order to make it easy for you guys, I've given you a, uh, I'm gonna skip that one. I've given you a promo plan here, okay? This is the, the calendar that I've just given you. And it's sort of a layout. But the way I want you to think about it is we've got early here, okay? So we can start early if we wanna get our offer out. We're then in market. So when are we gonna make, make uh, put our products in market? And are we going to extend it, okay? So have a think about that. Are you gonna go early? How long are you gonna be in market for? And are you gonna extend it? And the way to use this sheet is quite simple. We don't wanna just update our website and put the offer on, okay? So as an example, we might do early access, okay? As the offer to start with. We might put that in there and we might send an EDM out at the same time and we might run some ads. We wanna make sure that we're spreading this message across everywhere. And then what we've got to determine is how frequently are we gonna send out emails, okay? How frequently are we gonna send emails to them? And these emails could be different things. It could be best sellers. It could be, you know, top categories, et cetera, et cetera. It could be last early access. And I'll give you a couple of ideas on this too. So what I want you to do is use this calendar to think about what emails you're gonna send out, okay? And think it then we come through here, we can go, you know, um, starts early, you know, go live, all those sorts of things. So I want you to think about leading with email, leading with the offer, because we've done a lot of work in October to build our email list. So we wanna be able to talk to them at this stage. So I want you to lead with emails and well, you need to send, you cannot send too many emails during this period, okay? Don't be scared, everyone is gonna be sending emails. So we're recommending at least one every few days during the time, depending how long your offer is. The longer the offer, obviously the more space you can put between them, the shorter your offer, the quicker you need to send out your emails. And the reason we recommend that is every single brand in the world is going to be sending emails and you're gonna be just getting lost underneath, okay? So we need to make sure that you every time you send, you get put at the top of the inbox, okay? I'll give you just one little uh, example that we did uh, over one period. So uh, in one of the brands I worked in, over Black Friday, 
just this one period here, we ended up sending 18 emails, right? 18, I, I, uh, I shit you not, <laughs> we sent 18 emails. And we sent the, you know, the early morning, we sent the afternoons, we sent the evenings, we sent the non-openers, we, we just sent all these emails, right? And our the CEO of the company at the time was like, Brendan, this is wild. Like, you cannot send that many emails. You're gonna absolutely piss everyone off. And I said, you know what, just trust me on this one. And we did it. And interestingly, every single one of those emails generated revenue. Every single email we sent made thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. And we got lots of complaints from everyone in the company. So I kept getting emails from the managers, from the sales teams. They're like, Brendan, what are you doing? You're wild, this is crazy. And so anyway, so um, trust you, trust me, it works. Anyway, what we then did was we then, after the event, we looked at the stats. Guess what the unsubscribe and the spam complaint rate was? Just tell me. So uh, do you think it was higher or lower or just about the same as, uh, as prior to doing that event? Just let me know, what are you thinking? Same, about the same, about the same. It was actually lower. We didn't have any spam complaints. We didn't have any unsubscribe. Oh, we didn't have, we still had unsubscribes just as per normal, but they were less than normal. But what, you know, what did happen? We made a bucket load of money, right? We sent 18 emails, right? People are absolutely good. People are just so used to it during this period, 100%. Don't be ashamed. It's, this is the time where you can be a little bit, you know, how's your mum? You can do it, all right? You can absolutely do that. So don't be afraid. So use this to plan out what your emails are gonna look like. Use it to decide whether you're gonna go early, whether you're gonna be in market, whether you're gonna extend, okay? And then just to make it easy for you because you're probably saying, Brendan, oh my God, I have to create all these emails. It's gonna be really hard. Please help me. I'm here to help. You only need these email templates, okay? So you only need four templates, super simple. The offer we've decided on goes in here, in this front bit, okay? Very easy. One big button, don't over design it. We insert the products, if we're using Klaviyo, super easy. We insert little buttons to where we want it to go to and we do one with text and we just rinse and repeat, okay? And to prove you that it's not just me telling you this because I'm lazy, here's some big brands that do the exact same thing. Every brand does this. All they do is offer text product, offer product image, offer product product, offer text product, okay? It may feel like they're doing these beautiful, crazy emails, but when you actually open and look at it, they're very basic emails because they were like me. They needed to get 18 emails out the door. So they didn't want to make it hard because you forgot what the last email looked like. But what you do remember is the offer, okay? Here's another example, JS Health. They all look very similar, okay? Have some little tricky things in here like timers and stuff like that, but it's just offer, product. That one doesn't have, the, it has the product here and a shop now button, right? What's another brand? True Classic, one of my faves. They did a text-based one, even better. Okay, very simple. So do you think this is gonna be hard for you guys to execute? Do you think this is gonna be hard? Yes, no. Feels like a lot, but if you, you, we're in September now. October is your, grow your audience. Set up our plan. November is execute. We've got time, we can do it. Absolutely can do it. Absolutely, we can do it. All right, what are we thinking? What's something we've learned from this uh, this session just here? I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you, Gab. Well, 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 everyone's writing in what they've learned. Gab, uh, Gab was the one who made these that made this these templates. By the way, um, we we do it for all of our brands. And what? How long did it take you, Gab? Did you say? Just two hours. Yeah. So I set up the templates in Clavio, and then I just put all the products in, scheduled them, and yeah, that was it. It yep. seems crazy. It seems like a lot, but when you sit down and you just get it done, it doesn't yep. take that long. I think it's just like the whole thing that scares people. But when you just sit down and think about the one thing that you have to do and get it done, it's yeah, it, it can be done in like a day. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. hundred percent. Okay, cool. Thank you, Gab. Um, uh, yes, Sonia, uh, who's in our elite. Yes, we can copy them. We actually have already copied them, I think, to you anyway. But you'll get all the templates in your in your um, Clavio. Sonia, we can do that for you, no problem. Um, cool. All right, team. We've got a couple of minutes uh, left. So I'm just going to go across to this. Let me just find the... Oh, I don't need to do it. It was just going to be a screen that said questions. Does anyone got any questions? 
Anyone that I want to ask, uh, just throw it in the chat and I'm more than happy to, to help you guys. Just throw it in the chat if you've got any questions. You're welcome. Uh, for those of you who are waiting for questions to come through, for those of you that aren't in our bootcamp or elite team, um, if you're interested in joining the program, hey Gab, could you put a link in the chat to uh, to the bootcamp? Actually, I'll, put, I'll bring up my screen. So if anyone wants to jump in uh, in our bootcamp, uh, it is designed to get people from zero to $10,000 a month. So if you want to jump in there, you can head to ecomacademy.co bootcamp. And anyone that joins in the next 24 hours, I'll personally audit your store for you. So I'll go in, I'll review your store, I'll check what's working, what's not working, and give you feedback on it. Um, but if you just go to ecomacademy.co slash bootcamp uh, and join up, uh, in the next 24 hours, I'll audit your store for you. Anyone that joins outside the 24 hours, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. But um, anyone that joins the next 24 hours, I will. For those that you are already in my boot camp and elite team, thank you very much. Elite team, we do have a session in eight minutes, which we go into this in a lot more detail. Uh, boot campers will talk about this in the community. All right. All right. Uh, thank you for those that are in it that's saying it's worth every cent. I concur with you. Uh, all right. Um, can you unjoin and rejoin to get the audit? Oh, funny, nice one, Shinta. I don't have an answer for that. All right. Um, so Terry asked a question. I'm worried that you don't currently have enough product range and designs. Well, um, I'll give you a, I'll give you an example, and, and I'll use a big brand as an example here, Terry. So um, Adidas or Adidas for my US friends, uh, they they did something during Black Friday where they only discounted one product, and they called it like the Black Friday sneaker. Uh, the black and they, it was an all black blacked out sneaker and they just went double down on that and they made it limited edition right so you could potentially do something that's just a black friday deal just a black friday offer on a certain black friday product okay that could be really interesting so you don't need to sell the whole house or sell the whole farm that example i gave you where we manufactured a product 12 months earlier to sell at black friday that was the only product we sold during that period and we i think we made like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars off one product okay so Absolutely, you, you don't need to use your entire range, okay? You don't need to do that. Cool. Um, any other questions, guys? Who else have we got? Um, cool. Now, if you are currently doing more than $10,000 a month, we do have another program that you could join, which is our elite team. Um, if you are interested in that, just reach out to me personally on Instagram and I'll chat to you about that, whether you're the right fit or not. Uh, it is very selective. We only let people in that we know we can grow. So just uh, reach out to me. I work with you personally one-on-one, -on -one, as well as our coaches work with you one-on-one -on -one to get you to a million dollars a year. So I'd love to work with you guys. All right, team, I think that's a wrap. I'm going to call it on that one. Those that uh, did register, you will get a copy of this recording. Uh, we'll post it in the boot camp first. So you guys in the boot camp will get it. Uh, elite teamers that are on this call, I'm going to see you in five minutes. I'm going to have a bio break. And then we're going to go deep, deep, deep into Black Friday and lay this out for all of you. All right, superstars, I really appreciated all of you today. It's been a lot of fun. Hopefully those that are on Instagram have enjoyed this. Hopefully the, the YouTubers and the Facebookers have also enjoyed it. So uh, always fun to do these masterclasses and jam about e-com with fellow nerds. Don't take that the wrong way. All right, team. See you all later. Catch ya.